Hi there, my name is Jeff Sackman. I run a GMAT website called gmathacks.com. One of the big focuses on that site and in my book, Total GMAT Math, is how to deal with arithmetic and algebra without a calculator. On the GMAT computer adaptive test, you don't have a calculator, so it's useful to have a lot of tactics to be able to do basic arithmetic quickly and accurately, even though you don't have a calculator. In some of my other videos, I've shared some simple tactics for multiplying and dividing by five, um, divisibility rules for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, and multiplying by 9. But I'm going to show you something with an even broader application. So we're going to talk about how to multiply two digit numbers. So let's say you've got something like 21 times 21. If you spent a lot of time memorizing squares, you might already know the answer to this one, but bear with me, pretend like you don't. If you were to solve for that the old-fashioned way, you'd probably set up a, something like this. You do 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 1 times 2, 2 times 2. Not the worst thing in the world, but it's a lot of steps. It's not very intuitive, even if you did it a million times when you were 11 years old. Um, what I've found watching people do this is they make a lot of mistakes. It's the easiest time in the process of an otherwise complicated question to make a mistake that you don't notice. And the tr what I try to do with my mental math techniques is show you ways to do the math more intuitively. So when you're walking through the steps, you're getting to the numbers in a way that makes more sense in terms of the numbers, not in terms of just blindly moving numbers around on the page. So with 21 times 21, what we're going to do is we're going to apply a tactic from algebra, from quadratic equations. So we're going to turn each one of these into 20 plus 1. So we're breaking it down into really the tens digit and the units digit. If this were 31, we'd do 30 plus 1. If this were 27, we'd do 20 plus 7. And now, if you know the FOIL method from basic algebra, you can do this. 20 times 20. 400, 20 times 1 is 20, 1 times 20 is 20, 1 times 1 is 1. We add it all up, and we get 441. Same thing that we got when we did it the old-fashioned way. If you look carefully at the old-fashioned technique I showed you before in a race, and look at this, you'll find that we're getting a lot of the same numbers, a lot of the same intermediate steps. Really, the process is similar. But what I like about this as I mentioned before, this is a more intuitive approach. What we're doing with each one of these steps is we're getting a lot closer to the answer. So we're thinking more in terms of approximate values than precise, sometimes meaningless, meaninglessly precise values. So in this case, it wasn't too hard to get to 441. But notice what happened. With the very first step, we got pretty close. We knew it was 400 plus something, and we knew that whatever we added wasn't much bigger. So it would have been a good guess to say the answer was going to be around 450. So from the very beginning, we were able to approximate pretty closely. With every additional step, we got closer and closer, and there was less work left to do. So by the time we were here at 440, this extra one, pretty much meaningless. If we're choosing between answer choices on the GMAT, the answer choices aren't going to be 439, 440, 441. They're going to look more like 381, 411, 441. So in this case, we're doing something more intuitively and we're applying techniques we know from algebra. The other thing I like about this technique is that you don't have to use addition. So let's say instead of 21 times 21, you're doing 21 times 19. Now remember, we want to keep all these steps as simple as possible. So if we did something like 20 plus 1 times 10 plus 9, still pretty easy, we'd be able to do it. But as soon as we get that 9 in there, everything gets a little more complicated. Like I said, in this case, it's not too bad. But 9s, 7s, stuff like that, they make it more complicated. They introduce more steps in which we can make stupid mistakes under the pressure of the test. So instead of 10 plus 9, let's stick with 1s. 1s are easy. So 20 minus 1. Doing pretty simple math here, all I'm saying is that 19 could be 10 plus 9, but it could also be 20 minus 1. So being careful with our signs, we're going to walk through the FOIL process again. 20 times 20, we know is 400. 20 minus 1, 
minus 20. 1 times 20 is 20, plus 1 times minus 1, minus 1. Minus 20 and plus 20 cancel out. And we get to 399. That's all there is to it. A couple simple steps. Every one of those steps is very simple arithmetic, and we've converted from something that would have been more challenging. So we're able to approximate from the, the beginning. 400 is very close. We're able to use tactics from algebra, and very quickly we can get to the precise answer in the case that we do need the precise answer. So as I've explained, this might be a little bit of a shift from the way that you did multiplication when you were 9, 10, 11 years old, maybe the way you're still doing multiplication if you're not always using a calculator. But you will discover that this will build your math skills, your intuitive understanding of how the numbers work, and ultimately, it'll make you faster.